All right. I'm super excited to have with me here today someone who I've been listening to his podcast for a long time. Um, actually, I believe it was one of the very first podcasts I got into when I first got an iPhone. It might have been like the iPhone 3 or something like that back in uh, 2011. But here to talk about the world of e-commerce and how he's now gotten into e-commerce as well as uh, how to build super fans for your business. Super excited to have with me here, Pat Flynn from Smart Passive Income. Pat, thank you for being here and maximizing e-commerce. Uh, excited to be here, Kevin. Thank you so much. Let's talk about it because, man, the SwitchPod is something new for me. I've never done a physical product before, but I've sort of tried to take what I've learned in the digital space over yeah. the last decade and incorporate that, and it's been a wild ride, that's for sure. Yes, yes, yes. So for those who are not familiar with your wild ride, uh, can you give like a quick cliff notes of uh, your wild ride up until today, basically? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I actually went to school for architecture, was wanting to be an architect for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And after being in the industry for a while, accelerating quite quickly in it and, and having big dreams, I got it all taken away from me in one day after getting laid off. And that was June 17th, 2008. And what I did was I took some knowledge I had about an exam that I took, a very niched exam in the architecture space. It's called the LEED exam. It's about green buildings and sustainable design, that kind of thing. And then I put it on a website and I just tried to make a business out of that because I couldn't get back into architecture. There was just nobody hiring or anything at that time. So I got inspired by some people who were sharing success stories about their own online businesses. So I built my own and little did I know that it would change my entire life because what happened quite quickly after being very active in forums about this exam, showing up all the, all the time, I mean, literally 12, 14 hours a day, just talking about this exam online with people wow. with, who I could help. Eventually I became the expert. And even though I didn't consider myself the expert, that's how I was seen because I was showing up. And so uh, later that year, I published a study guide to help people pass that exam. I took a lot of my notes and I compiled them into this information and I sold it for $19 on uh, PayPal. And I just had a button on my website. And in that month, I had made uh, $7,908.55 from a $19 ebook. Wow. And that just blew me away. First of all, I thought the FBI was going to come because I was like, this is not real. This is how can this happen? Um, second of all, I was just like, what, what's going on here? I didn't go to school for this. I'm not a business person yet. Not only was I getting paid more than I was in, as an architect, I was getting people thanking me for what I was doing, calling yeah. me by name. And that was the biggest realization is that you can help people in, this own little, in their own little way. I didn't create something that is like the next fidget spinner or the next Uber or something that changes the whole world. But to these people... It was exactly what they needed, and they, they were very, very grateful for that. So then I built smartpassiveincome.com, which is a business uh, and a brand and a blog that later turned into a podcast and all the things I have going on now to just basically be up front and show people how I did that. And to start, that was my only case study, the success I had from that business. But then I started to kind of experiment live with people. I built an iPhone app company that reached about a million dollars in revenue, and then I, I kind of, we, we disbanded that after a while. I built some niche websites in all different kinds of spaces from security guard training to food trucks. And I showed people how that was done. And I shared with people, not just like all the things I was doing right. I was sharing with people uh, also what I was doing wrong and what I wish I had done different, differently. And I was also showing people and sharing how much money I was making from all these endeavors and what was working and, and how much money I was making, how much money was being spent. And uh, eventually I just got elevated in, in this space as somebody who was just the, the transparent guy who was teaching mm -hmm. people business by showing people how it was done and like walking the walk, not just talking the talk like many people do in this space. And that led to a podcast that now has surpassed 65 million downloads, a uh, bestseller book and, and, and multiple books, um, keynote speeches around the world. And now I just, I mean, the cool part is I've built this business in a way that allows me to support my family and be here with my kids and walk my kids to school every day, pick them up every day and, and those kinds of things. So it's, it's, it's very much a lifestyle business at the same time. And then most recently, uh, it's been experimenting. My latest experiment that I've been sharing live is this SwitchPod, which is a physical product that my videographer and I invented after finding a need in the video space. And this has been a two-year process, multiple prototypes, literally invented something, patented it, never having done that before. And recently, earlier this year, at least 2019, I, uh, we launched it on Kickstarter and made about a half million dollars, 5,000-ish backers who supported it before it was, it was made and manufactured. Then we've been working with a company, Product, who's been connecting, uh, connecting us with manufacturers in China to have this all done. And now we're learning about this part of the, 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 the business space. 
-hmm. and just how difficult it is. Like to anybody who's ever created or worked with anything uh, China related or Amazon related, just kudos to you because this stuff is hard and we're very, we're deep in the middle of it right now. I like literally this week, we're trying to figure out how to get this on Amazon and our UPC that we got from GS1 uh-huh. had already been taken by somebody who has a product on Amazon. Oh, they might have mis, misnumbered it or something. And so we've been just dealing with Amazon support and it's just like driving me before. nuts. Yeah. And I'm like, why am I even doing this? Let's go back to digital because any change I make, I can just have it done tomorrow and I don't need mm-hmm. this stuff. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's crazy. So yeah, welcome to the world of e-commerce. Now, Thank just you. just out of curiosity, you've done so many different things along the way. You know, over the last you know what eleven years or so. So, what made you not do e-commerce five six years ago? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, I mean, I was always in the in the camp of just digital, digital, digital. Mm-hmm. Why would you even attempt a physical product? Because mm-hmm. there's so much more involved. There's, the margins are much less, and there's so many more pieces that have to move and 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 shipping and returns. Like digital is so much easier. That's what I started with, and that's what I always recommended. But there are just some cases, and I found this out recently, where there has to be a physical product there to support those people. Because right. I always build businesses, and I tell people to build businesses. Well, serve your audience. Serve your audience. Mm-hmm. I was only touting the digital. Sometimes people need the physical product to help them. And it, be, it became very apparent when my uh, business partner, Caleb, and I, he was also my videographer for my digital stuff. We went to an event called Vid Summit, and we noticed everybody there using those bendy tripods to hold their cameras a little bit further away from them to get a better wider angle on their mm. cameras. But then they would struggle with them, opening them, closing them. We're like, there's got to be a better way. Like, there has to be. Because there's so many, like there's 10 million Gorilla Pods used in the world. And there, there has to be somebody who came up with a better solution and there wasn't. Mm-hmm. So we're like, okay, we know there's this pain. Come on, we're business owners. There's an opportunity here. Like, let's, let's do something. So right. immediately we connected with a guy who we knew who was also at that conference called, uh, his name is Richie. He has, a, he has a company called Product. He helps entrepreneurs who don't know anything about physical products like us uh, get those physical, physical products made. And um, he, we were like, Richie, what do we do? He's like, just talk to people, man. Like, that's the first thing you need to do. Ask people what they need help with, what their ideal situation would be, what they hate about what they have, what they wish they had instead. You're going to learn so much by doing that. Don't draw anything. Don't, don't create anything yet. You need to do the customer research. And luckily, we just happened to be where those people were. So after all these conversations, we're like, whoa, there is an apparent need here. So we had that green light to just keep going with it. And we cut out a piece of cardboard into a shape. And we're just like, does this shape work? What do you think? What do you think? And they're like, what is this? Is this cardboard? And we're like, no, no, imagine like a camera on top of this. And like, oh, okay. And then what if the legs did this? Oh, yeah, okay. Well, I need to see it to see what, what that might be like. So then we worked with uh, Richie to get the 3D printed prototypes mm-hmm. made. And they, they were clunky. They broke. They didn't work. But it gave people an understanding of, oh, that's what you meant. Okay, well, I think it should be shorter. This grip doesn't work. Or, you know, I want grips going all the way up the neck. And wow, okay, so then 17 iterations and two years later, we finally came to a point with a metal prototype that cost $1,500 because we got those green lights all along the way with those crude versions Mm -hmm. to then have the confidence to to launch it on Kickstarter and have some beautiful imagery behind it and the endorsement of some amazing influencers who helped support us along the way through relationships that we were just building um, all along the way. And and, and our audiences knew this was coming because we were very open with the process the entire way such that when we launched it, it wasn't a surprise. They all knew it was coming. And many people in my audience in particular, they're not videographers. Caleb's audience is. But my audience, like many people bought the product just because they were so interested in the story behind it. They don't even need it. And, and, and that helped to bring it to success. And now we're in retail stores online, like B&H Photo. And, and we're, we're going to be going on Amazon, cross our fingers, hopefully before the holiday here. And maybe Best Buy, maybe Target, who knows? But we're having a lot of fun and all the money that we're making, we're just putting back in for more inventory and better products. And we're, we're adding new products to the line very soon. Like it's so, fun, it's so much fun. I wish I had done physical products sooner because there's just something that happens when a person holds the thing that you made or created or, or gave to them that just doesn't happen in, in the digital space. Like I could hold, I can hand over a switch pod to somebody and they go, yes, this is exactly what I needed and they can use it immediately. When it comes to like courses, mm-hmm. they can go, yeah, that's the course I need and they, they buy it and they go, okay, now I have to do the work. Now I have to like wait for things to happen and like six weeks later, then they get the result. It's 
completely different. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, because there, there is something about just the tangible nature of physical products, which I find to be a lot of fun. And I think my mind wraps my head around it, wrap my head around it uh, pretty well because, you know, it's something that's like, you know, if you're selling, you know, a water container or something like that, you know, it's like, yeah, you can get feedback from people. And, you know, you went real deep into not just making a incrementally better mousetrap, but like really honing in on, you know, figuring out what the problems were for the, the end customer and really building it up. It reminds me a lot of, um, in a previous episode I had on uh, Alex Jimenez that, you know, you know as well. And mm-hmm. it was kind of a similar thing, although she had an existing audience for years in that particular niche, but you kind of had it in this niche as well. Um, so you created the relationships of the influencers and then you basically had, you know, people re- lined up ready to go when the, um, when, when you're ready to basically put it up for sale. So yeah. um, what, what was it like when you first started getting the sales in? Huh. Well, first of all, like even before that, giving it to people even in the prototype mm. phase was really neat. It was like, it was unlike anything I've ever experienced, to be honest. And, yeah. and to hand it to somebody and, and, and have them want to take it home, it's like, oh my gosh, we, we are on to something here. Like, this is great. And even handing it to people and people going, this is, I would never use this. Like, this is dumb. That was helpful for us too because we go, okay, why is it dumb to you? Well, I don't, I don't ever do vlogging. Like, I don't need to get the camera to go out that way. I need something that's sturdy that hangs from trees. Okay, well, there is a solution for that already. You should probably get the gorilla pod. Mm. You are not in our target audience. So that, that, even the negative feedback helped us too to hone in on who our target audience is. And, and so that was cool. But then like when we launched on Kickstarter, it was like, okay, we had an internal goal uh, or so, so our external goal on Kickstarter, because, you know, you get, you get people to sort of pledge with their dollars. And if you reach mm-hmm. that certain dollar amount, then it unlocks and you get that money. And it provides a lot of excitement. It provides like an event-like fashion to a launch of something and, uh, and, and that sort of thing. So our external goal was 100000 That's how much we needed for the molds and all that stuff and, and, oh, wow. and how much we would know we would need to just deliver and probably just break even basically. We got to $100,000 in 11 th- uh, hours and 24 minutes. It's a 60-day campaign. We, we got our goal in less than 12 hours. And I, like even some of those first sales coming in, we just like Kickstarter also updates live. So you just see the numbers like flowing like over, mm-hmm. over time across the day. And it was like launch day for us. So we were all huddled up at, at Caleb's house and we were just like, getting ready to interact with new customers and be there to answer comments and, and questions and stuff. And we, we were just like, what is happening? Like this can't yeah. be real. And then all of a sudden midway through, like as we were at $50,000, um, you know, six, seven, eight hours in, uh, Peter McKinnon, who's this giant vlogger uh, who we had sent one to in the mail with like really nice mm-hmm. packaging and a note and just like, hey, thanks for supporting us because we met him at a conference earlier and he really loved it. Oh, so nice. we had a new prototype made very expensive because we didn't have the molds. It was $1,500 to make one. So we got one specially made just for him as a thank you because he really inspired us to keep going. Uh, and we just sent it to him. We were like, we're not asking for anything in return. We don't expect anything from you. We just want you to have this as a thank you. And then like eight hours in our campaign, like on, on one of Pete's Two Minute Tuesday videos, like it's a video all about the product and he's using it and showing it off and it's super high quality. And like it's been seen about a million times now. Um, and, to, and even in the video, he said they did not pay me. These are just two dudes who I met who wanted to create something better for us. And here it is, the Switch Pod. And it's just like, I was crying when I saw that video. Yeah. And of course, with his kind of influence, it was just like <laughs> numbers. Like right, crazy. right, right. Uh, and we were just like, whoa, this is, this is insane. Like, this is real. And then reality set in and we're like, all right, we better deliver for these backers now. <laughs> the pressure's on, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, so we were very strategic with that as well. We got a lot of advice from people who we spoke to about Kickstarter before, because that's, that was our launch model mm-hmm. uh, to begin with. And they were like, one skew, one color, keep it simple. Cause the more you add on, the more logistics there's going to be required, the more, you know, people are going to want this color, but the size, if you have all those different options, it's going to mm-hmm. be a mess. Don't add t-shirts, don't add like fun, th- just make it about the product and have the product speak for itself. And that's what we did. So it became very simple and relatively for us to go, okay, now we got this one product. Let's make the molds for this one product. Let's get the one color for this one product and let's get the one box for this one product. And let's just ship this one product to everybody who bought it. 
and some people bought mul multiple, which was cool. And, um, and we were able to get it shipped out in time two years after the idea was conceived. And it was perfect because a week after we shipped was Vid Summit 2019. So two years later in the same location where that, uh, that, that idea was born, we worked out a deal with that, uh, the founder of that uh, event, Daryl Eves, um, just amazing guy. Mm -hmm. uh, we worked out a deal where he would purchase one for all the attendees that year. And we had a keynote on stage to finish the event to talk about and, and, and tell the story. Okay. And big time vloggers were there too. So we kind of all split it, uh, split the cost of what it would be to manufacture 1,500 of them just for the uh -huh. attendees there. And it was cool because at the end of the conference, we, both Caleb and I, were up on stage telling the story. And usually when you know you have a sponsor on stage telling a story, you know there's going to be like a pitch for the product or whatever. Everybody already had the product. Everybody was already using it. So we just told our story and pitch free and just we got a standing ovation. Everybody loved it. We had them sign up for the affiliate program and just people were sharing it. And because it was on sale on Shopify at the time, okay. like our sales just from the nature of people getting it and unboxing it and filming themselves doing so and sharing it with their own audiences. I mean, we were selling many, many more units per day. And, and, and that month was our record month for us. The best month we've had since the Kickstarter campaign because it's been available for pre-sale since. And now we're in Amazon mode. We're in trying to figure out how to add new products to the line, more SKUs, accessories, that sort of thing. It's so much fun. I, it's so much fun. It's so crazy. So yeah, we're having a blast. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, a lot of people listening to this are saying, wow, you went all backwards, Pat. You're going to Amazon last because so many people listening to this have started on Amazon. That's what we heard. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So one question a lot of people are going to have is there's this mindset people have is like, I put things on Amazon. I put in keywords. I run PPC. I do giveaways. I do whatever I do to launch it on Amazon. And then the sales just happen. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm assuming with Kickstarter, it's not just you put it on Kickstarter and it just happens. So that you probably had to do something to bring people to that Kickstarter. What did you do Correct. to make sure people got there? So, of course, like I said, that, that influencer relationship was really important. And, and sure. there were a few other key influencer relationships that we had where uh, we were coming from a place of service and we wanted to, to, to help them. And as a result, they wanted to help us back, which was great. And that's, that's really the way to do it. But it was a lot of telling the story of the creation along the way mm. that got people involved in the process. These are things that I talk about in my book, Superfans. And I think where I came from was, okay, we, have, we, we don't even know what we're doing. But what I do know how to do is to get people in, involved in the story. So let's tell the mm -hmm. story of the switch pod. Let's really get in on that and, and, and bring people along for the ride. And this is where I think we did it right. And where a lot of people who sell on Amazon, they feel like they're missing, they're missing that connection to the, to the customer, mm -hmm. right? You're just getting, you know, the sale on the other end versus what we did was we spent a lot of time building the relationship first, which then led into the product. So I think, I mean, there was a lot of effort with that. There was a lot of going to conferences where other video people were and just introducing ourselves and saying, hey, we, we created this thing, what do you think? And, and having them offer feedback and a lot of people who I think are creating products are worried that if you go that way, it's like, well, you're giving away your idea, your, you know, what if somebody steals it? And I, that is a legit thing to think about. But I think that the pros are so much more than the cons when it comes to especially inventing something, getting people to tell you what's wrong with it first before you actually make the thing. And then you can sort of craft it to what, to what it is. And I think also because the product speaks for itself, it does its own marketing. So people in the video space, especially, they all talk to each other. Mm -hmm. They go, what's the latest gear? They do gear reviews. So it kind of set up nicely for us in that we are targeting people who naturally share the things they buy with other people, which I know is a huge advantage for us as well. And a lot of people who spend loads of dollars on, on super expensive camera equipment, this is like a steal for them, especially with scratching that itch that they have related to the problem that this is solving. But I think that where any business, no matter how you do it, I don't, I don't think doing it your way is backwards or my way is backwards. I think there's just different ways to approach it. But I think that no matter which way you do it, you have to in some way, shape or form, insert the story and get connected to the customer and get to know them better and, and understand them. And that I feel is what I brought, uh, what we brought to the table that is our huge advantage is that we have the connection to the customer already. So if a person were to come on and rip us off and create a, a, like a super cheap China version of, of this, which we know is likely going to happen at some point, guess what they will never have? They'll never have the connection that we have with our audience and the audience that we've built. And 
Kickstarter in particular is nice because if you get some velocity there, then they will actually uh, show uh, the, the, the campaign to other people and they'll, they'll put it out there. We did a little bit of advertising as well during the Kickstarter campaign. So it's not like it was just all organic, but at the same time, it was mostly organic. But that's the thing that we have. That's our unique selling proposition. It's like the story behind the tool. It's like, like people came up to us and they're like, Pat, I don't know how you did this, but you made me really excited about a stupid little tripod. Like, how did you do that? Right. And it's like, it is really just, it's a tripod and it does, you know, the legs come together and you can hold it in a fancy way that nobody else has done. But it was because we made the story about them, the creator being the one who gets to use this tool as like their lightsaber, if you will, in their mm-hmm. battle against, you know, fighting for the best shot, right. Or, or whatever. Uh, we didn't paint that story in particular, but when you open the box, it's made for creators by creators. Me and Caleb are creators, but this right. was also made for by the community itself. So bringing them along in the story makes them feel like they're a part of something so that now we're at that point in a very, I hate to make this comparison, but like in an Apple-like way, now when we have something new to sell, they're likely going to know that it is something that was influenced by the rest of the community and mm. they'll be waiting for it but before they even know what it is. And they have, they're, they are, they're already asking us, like, what's your next product? Like we're giving them a sense of we are the team who's finally stepping up for vloggers to create things that they a- they've actually been needing this whole time. So I don't know if that that helps, but 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 getting into the customer's head and and being with them and 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 offering uh, our product as a service to them versus just hey here's a problem that can solve here here's a solution for your problem and go get it and buy we'll never see you again. I mean we love the relationship part of it and and have our backers very much to thank for that. Yeah, that's awesome. So it sounds like you developed the super fans, uh, which I think is a good segue into, you know, the book itself. So it's basically you lived what was in the book. Yeah. Um, so tell me for, let's say someone is like, they're listening and they're mostly on Amazon, but maybe they have a Shopify store or got a handful of sales. What are some things they could do to start cultivating, you know, Amazon's a little protective of uh, customer data, sure. but when you have your own customer data for like Shopify store, you can start doing more things. What are some little touch points they could do to start building their own super fans? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 so super fans aren't created overnight, right? Like you don't listen right. to a song and then the next day you're like dreaming about the band that's saying that song, but you might be right. going like, well, that's a cool song. You might share it with a friend or you might hear it on the radio again and then turn it up. Fans are created by the moments you create for them over time mm. and exponentially making them feel more special and special over time. And so there's a number of things that I talk about in the book. It starts with just activation moments or little things that you can do to trigger a person who just finds you or just buys your product to go, oh, I like this company. I want to learn a little bit more about them. And the easiest way to do this is to nail the lyrics. So just like a song, right? It's the lyrics of a song that we really connect with in addition to the beat. And the story is mm-hmm. about my wife. When uh, she, So my wife, April, she's a huge Backstreet Boys fan, like ginormous Backstreet Boys fan, which is funny. Somehow we ended up together. I'm an NSYNC fan, but it still worked out. <laughs> um, so she has this like box of stuff in her closet of all the dolls and action figures of a boy band. It's kind of ridiculous. But I asked her about like the first memory she had about this band. And she was like, yeah, I remember specifically because she had just gone through a bad breakup. And she heard one of their songs on the radio. It was actually one that she heard many times before, but she never really paid attention to it until now because every lyric in that song was everything she was going through in that moment. And that song was called Quit Playing Games With My Heart by the Backstreet Boys. And so, you know, they nailed it. Target audience, girls between 13 and 18. What happens in a girl's life at that age? They fall in love. They fall out of mm-hmm. love. How do they talk? They say things like, well, quit playing games with my heart okay, let's write a song about it. And that becomes the language. Mm. So you need to nail the language that your audience, your customers use to describe their problems, their pains, their needs, their wants. Because when you can nail the lyrics, they're going to go, wow, this company knows exactly what I'm going through. And that's a quick and easy way to stand out amongst everybody else who's also just driving noise in their face. Mm -hmm. You can listen to them and then essentially just regurgitate their problems back to them in a way that they understand then they'll know you have a solution. I think it was Jay Abraham who said, if you can define the problem better than your target customer, they're going to automatically assume you have the solution. So that's number one. Uh, another thing to do is make people feel like they're a part of a community. And this is, this is sort of like next level. When people feel like they belong, when they feel like they're involved, they invest. When they are involved, they invest. So it's like, I remember when I was a kid, I was very short. And my friends unfortunately, were very tall. So what did we do? Of course, we played basketball. So even though they were friendly and they invited me to come on the court with them, they never passed me the ball and they never let me shoot. So even though I was, quote unquote, on the court, 
I was never playing basketball, actually. Mm-hmm. Even though technically, if you're on the court during a game, you are playing basketball. But I didn't feel like it. And how often do we, we brands, we just make people, f- we, we just invite people in, but we don't make them feel mm-hmm. like they really belong. So there might be some things that you can do inside the box itself to make people feel like they belong to something much bigger. For example, when you open SwitchPod box, made for creators by creators. Hey, I'm a creator too. This was made by creators. Like let's, yeah, like I'm in this with you guys Mm -hmm. versus just the number one tripod to make shooting easy. Like, okay, that's what the product does. But no, Mm. this is about you as the creator. So we're, we're kind of speaking on the same level as, as our, as our customer, right. And making them feel like they're in it with us. And that's helping them feel like they're a part of a community with us too. Any moments that you also might have to have your community meet each other a little bit harder for Amazon products, easier for digital, but like Facebook groups related to the product or something like that, where people can connect with each other and they can share tips about your product with others. That can be very good. There's a physical product out there that's very popular that does a great job of getting its community to meet each other. Lego. You think about it. There oh, are true. There's Lego conventions. Mm-hmm. There's Lego. There's Brickfest, BrickCon. Those are actually not even put on by Lego. Lego supports and endorses them because what does that do? Well, it just elevates the brand, bringing their right. community together. Uh, did you know that? Do you know what an AFOL is? A F O L. I'm not familiar. It's a group of people, adult fans of Lego. Oh, so okay. If you look up AFOL meetings on meetup.com or even on Google, you're going to find thousands of places around the U.S. and the world where adult fans of Lego are coming together because human beings want to find people just like them. So you imagine an adult fan of Lego, they're probably the laughing stock of their neighborhood, right? But when they find other people like them, now there's a common language. And what does that all do eventually? Well, it elevates Lego as a brand because right. you're providing that space for that community to come together. And then the final thing I'll offer is that one easy, quick thing you can do is if, if at any point in time you have direct access to your customer, maybe they're following you now on Instagram, right? Because of the product. And you're like, hey, follow us on Instagram and maybe get some deals and stuff. And that's always fine. Easy thing you can do. Get your phone. Find somebody who's following you on Instagram who you know is a customer or, or just is, is, is a fan of yours or following you for whatever reason. Send them a direct message with mm-hmm. a video. Number one, they're not getting that from anybody. Number mm-hmm. two, to get that from somebody who they bought from is mind-blowing. It's going to show that there's a real Absolutely. person, a human being on the other end. It's going to show that you care. And you don't do this for any other reason than to just say thank you. When you do it for an agenda, like, oh, by the way, I want to let you know about our Cyber Monday sale, then it, it defeats the whole purpose, right? When you do it for no other reason than to connect, people will connect closer to you. It's you digging your well before you're thirsty. When you dig the well, when you are thirsty, when there is a reason to do it, well, it's already too late. You're going to be too thirsty to survive. So dig your well now, build those relationships, and it's so quick and easy to do, to do a video. Step up behind the brand, behind the, custom, but behind the product, show up and talk to your people directly. And that short little video, I promise you, is going to get like a 90% reply rate and people are going to be blown away. And what do they do when they're blown away? They start talking about you to their friends and their family and other people. They're going to leave you better reviews. They're going to have a better likelihood of you be, of them being a, a repeat customer. All those things come into play when you make these small little connections. So just a little high-level overview of like some of the things that you can do immediately, actually, with the book Superfans. No, that, that's, that last one was perfect and the interesting thing is i just finished super fans and i was like i gotta go out and try bonjoro the yeah. uh, it was the app that you recommended that you could send video messages to people and as much as it made perfect sense that they would do this i was like floored when all of a sudden i got an email from someone at bonjoro who was like hi kevin welcome to bonjoro she used my name at least five times in the yeah, video yeah, yeah. And she wanted to know more about my business. I was just like floored, like, but this is the company. It would make sense. So I could only imagine for someone that gets that email, you know, who, you know, they just bought your, your spatula and you're like, Hey, what kind of recipes do you use to make, you know, things with the spatula or whatever the case is, they're going to go nuts. Right. And, 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 and like the switch pod, right. I can just immediate like, and, and we haven't done this yet, but we will just, we just, it's, we're a two person company right now. But we'll reach back out to somebody who buys our SwitchPod and go, yo, thanks for buying the SwitchPod, Jake. I see your YouTube channel is uh, you know, growing and I love that video that you just did of whatever. I would say the video. I wouldn't just say whatever. 
But, right. um, you know, just like, hey, thanks for being a customer of SwitchPod. If you have any problems with it, let us know. You rock. I mean, oh my God, like you call me by name and you checked out my YouTube channel. Like you're right. A, you're a tripod company. Well, okay, cool. All right. And then your friend later, later that day goes, oh, yeah, what, what are you using on your, on, your, on your camera there? Oh, this is a SwitchPod. Dude, by the way, these guys, like they reached out to me after I purchased the product. Like that, that was so cool. You know, like those kinds of conversations you enable to happen now. Well, and it goes back to what you were saying before of, you know, if you get ripped off and you got competitors that are just all in a race to the bottom, little things like that will keep people around and price is not as much of a factor. No, so it's not. You can charge a premium. Mm -hmm. You can expect that your super fans, when they see a ripoff product, they're going to be on the front lines defending you. And, and before you even know it, they're going to have already done something to get that thing off of, off of your plate. And that happens all the time with me in the digital space. Like if somebody like a troll or somebody says some nasty stuff to me on social, like I already see like 10, 12 people in there from my crew, Team Flynn stepping up to go, you're wrong. Like get out of here. Like you don't belong here or whatever. And it's, it's like crazy. It's like, that's, that's business insurance right there in my opinion. So true. So true. So true. So if somebody wanted to follow you online, where would they go? Uh, so I would go to smartpassiveincome.com. That's my uh, media company. And, and I talk a lot about business advice there that may or may not be helpful for those of you who are selling on Amazon and doing a lot of e-commerce, but there's been more e-commerce stuff on there lately. But I'd also recommend patflynn.com, my personal brand site where I talk about a lot of things, including the switch pod, but other things that are important to me, like education for kids and gaming and tech and, and all that kind of stuff too. So just, just more of me if, if you like it. If not, no worries. I just, thanks for being here and, and allowing me to come on, Kevin, and, and share my story a little bit. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I definitely would recommend people go check out um, what you've got to say out there at Smart Passive Income. Because the interesting thing is, everybody that sells, even if they're like 100% on Amazon, they all have dreams of selling off Amazon. And so I think Superfans is a playbook of how you can build a sustainable brand off Amazon. So definitely, yeah. definitely recommend they go check it out. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you. I appreciate you being here. Take care.